Let me tell you something you already know. I'm Dave Kirwaf, languageofhitting.com. I've been gracefully blessed to be involved with the baseball and softball training communities now for 25 years. My specialty is player development. And the purpose for player development is to develop players to be better players in the game. Decades ago, I noticed this myself. My players are doing great in batting practice, they're doing great in these scrimmages. But when it comes to the actual real game, there's things breaking down, there's failures, there's obstacles. So from the player development side, I need to find a scheme, a par training paradigm that's gonna match what my players do in practice and it's gonna model what's gonna happen in the game. So doing simulated games with the team and in a squad games, that's one way of doing it. But in the training environment, in the batting cages or just batting practice on the field, what can we do to model what's gonna happen in the game? We'd love to know that as players and coaches, and that's how we wanna practice and train. So let me share with you some of my observations that I've noticed throughout the years that how we train players uh, collectively and uh, a new paradigm, a new training methodology that I've been using to train players that is completely different than what the rest of the baseball community and softball communities are using. It begins with this. It begins with a concept that sometimes what we see on video is not what really happens to the actual batter when we stand in the batter's box. It's something completely different taking place. You're watching video of the number one draft pick of the Cincinnati Reds 2017, Hunter Green. Hunter Green, when he throws the, the baseball as a pitcher, he'll sit anywhere between 97 and 98 miles an hour. Now, I don't know if he's doing it this particular day, and I also want to give a, a shout out to Fan Graphs and their excellent video work that they do for our, our baseball training communities to, you know, get highlights of the, some of the top prospects. Uh, thank you, Fangrass. Thank you for your work and the tedious time you, you take putting in the editing and the editing in this and position your cameras. Great job. So we're looking at Hunter Green. And if you look carefully, this is what my, my observations have, have showed me. Most video cameras are filming sports action in 60 frames per second or faster. Now, when you play 60 frames per second or faster in, in the camera eye, whether it be a, you see on your laptop or, or iPhone, you can basically almost see the ball come out of the pitcher's hand. And this is when you play it back in normal speed. The difference is when you stand in the batter's box and you're actually watching 97, 98 come at you, there's an illusion taking place. You actually lose the ball. There's a part of the flight path you don't see. So now we have contradicting viewpoints. One from the batter's perspective, what's really going on, and one where the, the science community, the sports science community is telling us, well, this is what it looks like. Why isn't this real? There are few positions in the sports science community that will tell us though that the batter doesn't really see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. There is a gap of time or space where they'll pick it up four, five to six feet later after he lets it go. This makes up for the fact that he won't actually see the pitch until it's a quarter of the way towards him. This makes up for the fact that he won't actually see the pitch until it's a quarter of the way towards him. As the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, it takes the brain one-tenth of a second just to locate the ball in space. While this is happening, the ball travels over 12 feet. The ball travels over 12 feet. So this is the illusion that batters are experiencing. So if this is really the case, Dave, then why aren't more players telling us, hey, I see the ball four, five, six feet later. Well, I think it's because players are so preconditioned and uh, scouts and coaches are afraid of losing their jobs. If you say something that is so far off the realm of what we've been heard, we've heard for decades of our life, then you know people are fearful of losing their jobs. 
or say something that's gonna make them sound different. I'm not afraid to lose my job. The only thing is I may lose one less customer because they may think that my, my fears are off the wall. But I really don't care because I look at what the product is when, when someone's working with us and under our player development schematics, I know what the, the truth is and I know how it's gonna make them better for the game. So I'm really not afraid to lose my job. Another person who alludes to this type of thinking where there is a, a type of an illusion is the eye specialist, Dr. Bill Harrison. And if you know about Bill, Dr. Bill Harrison, he was a, one of the pioneers with the, the Kansas City Royals and their baseball academy back in the 70s and worked with many, many great players, great hitters throughout the years. In one of his books, he talks about players learning the technique of centering their priorities. From his book, the last thing you center on prior to your actions affects the quality of your actions. So you want to make certain that you choose to center on the right thing, typically the ball, and stay centered upon it through the completion of your actions. To me, that's great stuff. It's great language. And we use language when we coach and we try to reach our players. The language we use to reach them is critical. So for me to reach my players, I've taken what he said and sort of made it fit my style and sort of simplified it. And this is what I tell players now. The last thought you have before the action is going to affect that action. Again, the last thought you have before the action is going to affect the quality of that action. So, what's your last thought? And everyone usually responds, the ball. The ball is my last thought, Dave. Well, that's probably right, but for me, I want more. I want a more specific thought than just the ball. Because I know the ball is too vague. And for most players, it's not enough. They still don't get better. And this is why I have the video series, The Best Hitting Drill Ever and The World's Greatest Hitting Formula. Because I'm very, very descriptive when I'm teaching the player the how to control that thought before the action. And I'm very descriptive about helping them control the ball in the flight path at the start of the race that we call hitting. And with that descriptive detail, I'm actually funneling upward a smaller thought than just a big general thought, the ball. John Garver, I put this video together a few months back about early sports science. And John Garver was the retired school teacher slash inventor of the oversized tennis racket and other things. But he had, he's, he mentions to the audience when he did this show with Alan Alda that it has taken him years to figure out why players can't hit and then more years why trying to explain what's really going on. The problem Garver decided wasn't his machine, but that batters simply didn't know how to hit. And it took me 10 years to find out what was behind that. 10 years. Then another 20 years trying to convince people I found it out. Head coach Danny Hall. I think that probably the majority of guys that are hitting, whether it's guys that I'm getting in a college program or whether it's guys that are playing professional baseball, have no idea what they're doing, whether it's mentally, physically, what have you. I don't think they understand what is going on uh, when they're trying to hit. So all this takes us back to the original comment that I love player development. I'm, I, I specialize in player development. And what we want to do is figure out paradigms and training schematics that's going to make our players perform best in the games. I don't know about you, but I hate wasting time. And I hate wasting time when I'm training. My time's important. Even more importantly is my energy that I'm putting into my training. Make the investment. The best hitting drill ever, the world's greatest hitting formula, it's going to help your players immediately. 
I'm Dave Kirloff. Lord bless you.